You're watching WBRZ Channel 2 News on your side. There's a security alert tonight at some local jails in our area. This after an uprising at a South Louisiana jail ended peacefully this weekend. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm George Ryan, along with Andrea Clessy. Changes are coming tonight in the way local parish prisons handle Cuban detainees. They want to make sure what happened in St. Martinville, Louisiana, does not happen in their jails. Crime reporter Ken Pastorek visited one of the local jails, and you have the story, Ken. That's right, Annie. Uh, George, East Feliciana, West Baton Rouge, Point Capi, and Tangipola all have Cuban detainees. In Point Capi's jail, there are 46 Cubans, and all jails are looking at better ways to handle these prisoners. Point Capi prison warden Will Porsche is looking hard at his policy concerning Cuban detainees. We're looking at beefing up uh, security and, uh, and looking at... Uh, also, cutting down on movement in the jail. Porsche says his 46 inmates don't give him problems, but he's concerned about the six-day Cuban hostage crisis in the St. Martinville jail. It ended peacefully Saturday night with the U.S. granting the Cubans' demand, deportation. Am I happy? Because like most Cubans in parish prisons, Herberto Herrera served his prison sentence and has waited years for deportation or release. Herrera says he expects some Cubans to follow last week's example. That's something that people might have in mind, you know, they say, well, it worked for them, I, I might, I'm going to do the same thing, it might work for me. In New Roads, the Cuban inmates at Point Capiz Jail concerned Carlton Bruce. Same thing can occur here. It happened over there, it can happen here. It can happen all over, everywhere they are. Others trust prison guards. The law enforcement, they're on their toes, and what else can you do? Be prepared, stay prepared. Point Capi officials say they've been prepared. They say that's why in the 10 years they've housed Cuban detainees, there's never been an uprising or an escape. Now we called around in many parish prisons in our area, housing Cuban detainees or making those security changes. Annie and George, none of them that we talked with have plans of getting rid of these folks because it's economic, economical. Mm -hmm. These folks make about $45 a day per Cuban inmate. That's about $2,070 for Point Capi per day. A lot of money. Goodness. Okay. Thanks a lot. Well, tonight at least some of those Cuban detainees from St. Martinville are on their way back to Cuba. Hours after reporters saw two unidentified men in handcuffs and orange jumpsuits get into a jet, the plane took off from the Alexandria airport. There are also several heavily guarded immigration and naturalization service vans there. There was no word on how many prisoners were on the plane. Meanwhile, Louisiana Senator John Bro had some strong words on the nation's deportation policy today. Bro said in a statement, It is not right that the American taxpayers should continue paying to feed, house, and provide medical care to Cubans who have served their time for their crimes. It's time to send them home. Bro also says next year he'll ask the Senate Judiciary Committee how to better prevent incidents like St. Martinville in the future. A new crime wave may be hitting you where you are least likely to suspect it. Now the Attorney General's office is following other states' leads to stamp out high-tech criminals. Catherine Mosley is in the newsroom with the latest on a special online unit. Mm -hmm. Andrea, every year computer criminals steal five to ten billion dollars. They also take advantage of and sometimes exploit children. So now a new undercover high-tech team will fight them every step of the way. Surfing the net has become an everyday way of communication for millions of people, young and old. But criminals have also made it a highway for committing the most heinous crimes, from child pornography to plotting a murder. Here in Louisiana, it's a lot more common than you'd think. Almost all of these cases are taken care of pre-trial. The reason is that the persons, when they're arrested, are so embarrassed by the arrest that they just go ahead and plead out. The Attorney, the Attorney General's Office wants online crime to stop. So they'll be fighting cyber criminals on their turf. This new unit will work strictly online, tracking Louisiana's internet crooks who hide behind a computer screen to find their victims. We have cases of kitty porn, we have pedophiles, we have people uh, involved in identity theft, we have embezzlement, we have all sorts of things. So we need a high-tech criminal unit that can look at these things and make cases against these people using the internet. Computer investigators hope they'll collect hard evidence to arrest and convict Internet criminals before they take their cybercrime directly to a victim's home.
The high-tech unit has a $330,000 grant to start with. They hope to get more money during the legislative session and through federal grants. And any of the investigators who will be trained law enforcement officers, but they'll only work on cases for a 12 to 18 month period. That's because in other states, most of these online investigators have requested psychological treatment after a short period of time. Really? Yes. Interesting. Okay. Thanks a lot, Catherine. Mm -hmm. We also spoke with the Attorney General about the state's $4.6 billion tobacco settlement. A recent report to state budget officials shows Louisiana will receive $15 million less than expected. That's because tobacco sales are down. The Attorney General says it means fewer people are smoking and getting sick, and we're not spending as much money on Medicare and Medicaid. Louisiana spends around $400 million a year treating smoking-related diseases. The chilly weather tonight brings with it a warning. A gas space heater in a bathroom is blamed for a morning fire at this home on Mohican Street near Acadian Thruway. Three puppies and a dog died in the blaze, which spread to the attic, causing about $30,000 in damage. Two adults were also home when the fire broke out. They escaped without injury. Meanwhile, some good news for holiday travelers headed out on Interstate 12 in Livingston Parish. Construction crews on the resurfacing project have stopped until January 4th, so that means all four lanes of traffic through Livingston Parish and throughout the holidays. That is good news. Work resumes January 4th, and eastbound lanes will again be reduced to one lane. Crews expect to finish the project in late February. On an average day, 2,400 passengers go in and out of the Baton Rouge Airport each and every day. Around the holidays, that number jumps up 5 to 20 percent. So if you're getting ready to pack up and fly, Channel 2's Crystal Griffith has some tips on how to make it all a little bit easier. If you're traveling, you don't need the music to tell you the airports will be busy. I usually don't travel too much, but uh, so far it's been pretty nice. And the more prepared you are before you arrive at the airport, the more likely your trip will run smoothly. Uh, life. Airport officials suggest arriving about an hour and a half early and pack your bags carefully. If they are bringing toys that are shaped like weapons, these will not be allowed on the aircraft with you in the cabin. It's best to mail or FedEx or UPS them. If you have a toy gun or a toy bow and arrow or an action figure that's got a lifelike gun, check with your airline to make sure that you can take it in your check baggage, but it definitely will not be allowed on the airplane. To make sure you make it through security, don't wrap any of your Christmas gifts in foil. The x-ray machines won't see through them and you'll end up unwrapping all your gifts before you even get there. Of course, that's provided you bought your gifts. I haven't bought any gifts yet. So to make it home with your sanity, be patient and remember, everyone else is trying to get home too. For the holidays, you can't beat home, sweet home. Crystal Griffith, Channel 2 News. Everybody's frazzled. Also, airport officials encourage you to take only one carry-on. They say even though you might be scared of losing your checked baggage, that's very rare. They say it happens about 1% of the time. And if you're planning on hitting the road for the holidays, get ready. Pre-holiday gas prices are the highest they've been since 1990. According to AAA, gas prices have risen by five cents a gallon during the past three weeks. That brings to the regional average to about $1.25 a gallon. AAA says that motorists may see higher fuel prices in the near future if there's a hard winter. Cold weather on the way. Let's check in with our Pat for tonight's frigid first forecast. Hi, Pat. Well, mostly Georgia's light rain and scattered showers tonight. Now, there's a travel advisory in effect for extreme northeast portions of the state. It's frozen precipitation anticipate there, but here we'll look for the liquid stuff. Doppler storm track radar verifying that. Periods of rain, light rain embedded in that, some heavier shower activity. Our WeatherNet 2 site will run the reading right now. Port of uh, Baton Rouge indicating 47 degrees. Again, the atmosphere is saturated, 30.04 in the pressure and the winds now, kicking up a little bit out of the west-southwest at about 4. So we'll find an evening, it'll continue to find that cloud cover holding, periods of rain and showers, and also the low tonight, 42, high tomorrow, 42. Back with all of your weather a little later in the show, now back to Annie and George. So the number 42 should uh, figure prominently in your day tomorrow. There is a theme developing. <laughs> well, it is one of the seasons South Louisianians love the best. I think you have to... Take a look at uh, 
what other people's needs are and if you can help in some way even if it's a small way uh, it's it's a good feeling tonight we'll show you how our two on your side program is making a difference hi i'm sergeant donald renner station at coonson air base coonson korea i'd like to extend a warm holiday greeting to my mother baton rouge louisiana and it is the season to spread cheer to those who need it on tonight's Two on Your Side, Sharon Weston Broom shows us two cases of holiday cheer, one secret, one not so secret, that will touch your heart. Take a look. As always, Two on Your Side partners are busy trying to lighten the load for many on our Christmas list. Thanks to the generosity of Chapman Furniture Company, one family will no longer have to sleep on the floor. I think you have to take a look at... Uh what other people's needs are and if you can help in some way even if it's a small way uh, it's it's a good feeling with help from our secret santa we were able to bring joy to a number of needy families this christmas bills are due um, i'm trying to do as best with means as i as i have now this christmas takes on a whole new meaning for alice and her three children i'll be honest you know i thought it was going to be kind of bleak <laughs> but i knew the children and i were still together and we would have somewhat of a Christmas together anyway. In the words of our secret Santa, mine was to give with a good heart, without controversy, to do God's will as I was called upon to do, and be recognized before him, not man. I was very surprised. It's, um, it's a blessing. For two on your side, I'm Sharon Weston Broom. It is the season. Mm -hmm. And we're getting into the spirit. You know, we get this the, the, the week that winter rolls around, and right. it's going to feel a little bit like it. Huh? Wet tonight. High tomorrow, 42. Yeah. Nighttime low tomorrow night, down to about 29. Ooh. And we shouldn't even hit the 60-degree mark all the way through Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Here's the stats from this afternoon. A 51-degree afternoon high, 43 the overnight low. Normally, this time of year, we're at about 62 and 42. Nowhere near that record high in 1967. But it was this date, three years ago, we slipped down to 18. So far, about 3,500 cents in the gauge. Outside, cloudy, 50 degrees. North-northeast winds at 8. So stand by, a lot of information coming your way on your weather right after this break. Okay, here it is. Tonight, overnight low 42. Okay, George Annie, what's the high tomorrow? 42. 42. You got it. A lot of clouds, rain, and shower activity, and that temperature's not going to budge much more when we hit that 42 nighttime low, probably around 4 a.m. So a little bit of daybreak rain, sunshine trying to pop through late tomorrow afternoon. You might get a little bit of clearing. So let's start off by taking a look at where the travel advisory is now posted. Now for northeastern portions of the state, eastern Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, you truckers stand by. Travel advisory, sleet and freezing rain in there for about the next 24 hours. So specifically the parishes close to Monroe, near West Monroe, all under a travel advisory. So winter weather advisory in effect there with the rain up there and also falling temperatures going down into the 30s tonight slick streets and travel anticipate there but around here it's all liquid precip so here's your tuesday's highs we project a daytime high tomorrow of what tomorrow there right kids 42 that's right 32 degrees in uh, little rock 22 in cape Girardeau, missouri and st louis about 12 in chicago and zero to 12 the readings in upstate minnesota all projected lows will find us at uh, right on the fringe there between about 29 and 31 for your nighttime lows tuesday night into wednesday morning but notice where the zero and below readings are, then teens and 20s. So a real Arctic blaster in here, kind of giving you that uh, Christmas-like feel. Take a look now at the cloud cover, and there's plenty of it saturating eastern Texas through central Louisiana. Here's the front. Here's the low that will glide right along that. It'll find an avenue to move, and that's where it's going. This is a Doppler site out of Lake Charles. You can see the shower activity really hitting us and holding in there. Some of it yellowish. That means some little heavier action. This is the Doppler site out of New Orleans. You can see what's going on there. So through tonight, tomorrow, this thing blasts through. Ridge of high pressure comes in. Cold air zips into the area. And a forecast that calls for wet weather tonight. Rain and showers. Breezy cold and 42. Morning drive when you head to the bus stop. Daybreak rain. Cloudy cold high tomorrow. 42. Nighttime low 28. Thank you, George. So cold tomorrow night leading into Wednesday. Look at the extended. Probably won't hit 60 degrees all the way through Christmas Day. Nighttime loads 31 to 34, 34 to 39. And on the salute board tonight, Fred Martin, happy birthday, 80 years young. Sammy Forbes, 82. John Gerald, 84. Warren Munson, 90 uh, years young over the weekend. And Tommy and Leola Perkins, 50 years of marriage. Our WeatherNet 2 site will show for you right now. 
at Galvez Middle School, it's 50 degrees, so the radar lit up pretty good tonight. A lot of rain, periods of rain, maybe a clap of thunder. If you are out and about, take it slow. All right, okay, Pat. Pat. Thanks a lot. Well, 6 o'clock sports is up next. Bo is up with a preview of a young lady who's giving the guys a run for their money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you could say it's all in the family, really. Up next, we'll show you what makes this athlete such a kick. Sports is on the way. Well, with each loss, the debate seems to grow among Saints fans. Should Mike Ditka be retained for another season or let go? Over the weekend, there were reports that owner Tom Benson was working on a buyout of Ditka's contract. Benson who last month said he would make no comment concerning the coach's future until after the season, is, however, holding to that word. As for the guys who put on the black and gold each weekend, one has to wonder if the recent talk has any effect on their preparations or performance on Sunday. As a matter of fact, Saint Safety Sammy Knight on Sunday had these thoughts on that very subject. It's not affecting the team's performance because, I, like I said before, individually you have to look within yourself. You know, I can't worry about what Mr. Dan Vincent does or what happens to Mike Dickett. I can only worry about and control what Sammy Knight does and, you know, how my teammates are feeling when we're out there. So, you know, we have to go out there and we have to play hard regardless of the situation. Well, the NFL has yet to issue any sanctions against Cleveland offensive lineman Orlando Brown. Brown, who was hit in the eye accidentally by an official's flag on Sunday, retaliated by pushing the ref to the ground. We'll keep you posted on this oh, situation. That's... All right, Shaquille O'Neal has been fined $10,000 by the NBA for making derogatory comments about the officiating crew in last Thursday night's game in Atlanta. Today, John Brady's 8-0 LSU Tigers picked up 14 votes for this week's AP Top 25 poll. That's good enough for a 30-second standing overall. The guys are back in action tomorrow night when they visit Centenary. As for the women, not much change here. UConn stays at number one. La Tech holds at number three. Sue Gunner's Lady Tigers make it two straight weeks at number 13. And Tulane remains at number 24. Well, throughout history, football has been a sport dominated by the guys. But as our Lee Zurich reports, one area girl has taken on the boys and beat them at their own game. It didn't take Christy Ferris long to get the basics of football down. She can punt, she can pass, and she can kick. So a few months ago, Ferris put her skills to test. She entered a punt, pass, and kick competition. I've been playing since I was like little, but I haven't really did the contest. My brothers have been doing it like every year, and then I just decided like I might do it because I saw some girls out there that I thought I could beat. Christy took on other 12 and 13 year old girls and she made it all the way to New Orleans, the Superdome for the sectional finals. Everybody gets nervous before they do big stuff like that to see if they won and stuff, but no, I wasn't that nervous. Christy won that competition in the Superdome, which means she got introduced at halftime of the Saints game. People that won at the end, we went out there in halftime and we uh, went out there by ourselves and they said our name and stuff and, it, and everybody was like cheering for us. We were like, which, yeah. which you can just imagine the reaction she got from friends back at school. Even the boys were impressed. They're usually expecting boys to say something like that. And then like a girl comes in there and they won the state or whatever. And they're like, well, that's pretty cool. They're all into that boys.